Welcome back to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. Now, we've seen several graphs throughout this video series that are specific to certain domains. So the candlestick chart is for specific financial markets. We've looked at correlation matrices, which tend to be fairly specific for mathematics and scientific uh, correlations and those sorts of relationships. And today, we're sort of in a similar case. We're going to look at sunburst diagrams. I have found sunburst diagrams to be the most common in the biology literature and the genomics literature. But as you're gonna see today, they can be used for lots of different types of hierarchical data that show relationships between one group and multiple groups that might sit below it or, or next to it. And to help us better understand how to read and create sunburst diagrams, I'm very happy to have Lindsay Betzendahl, who is a Tableau Zen master. So if you don't know Lindsay's work, you sure, certainly should go find it. So Lindsay, over to you. Thanks so much, John. Uh, my name is Lindsay, as John mentioned, and I'm going to talk about the sunburst chart. So the sunburst chart is a radial segmented display used to just represent hierarchical data. And I don't see them too often, honestly, but it's a pretty cool chart when you think about it, and especially if it's done correctly. The sunburst chart looks a bit similar to a donut chart where uh, a ring is broken into segments like a pie chart, obviously, representing a percent of the total degrees in the circle. In fact, the donut chart is just a one-level sunburst. Uh, it's that lowest level hierarchy that we have. Uh, but a sunburst builds on the donut chart by breaking each wedge within that donut, if you will, into further segments. Uh, and each additional ring around the sunburst represents a different level of that hierarchy. So I actually have an example of a real-life sunburst chart that I found in my house. So this is a wine tasting flavor wheel, and you may have seen them before. Um, but what you'll see here in the middle is the innermost hierarchy of the sunburst chart. And so these are the broadest categories of flavors within wine tasting. So like, for example, here's fruity. The second layer is taking that fruity and breaking it out into all possible um, options within the fruity category. So we have you know, berry, tropical fruit, citrus, et cetera. Then each one of these is further broken out into additional segments. So we have berries broken out into strawberry, blackberry, et cetera. And you can get a sense of how large each of these are in relation to their uh, next level down hierarchy, as well as a part of the entire total uh, wheel. So pretty cool and pretty cool that it's actually, you know, something that you may see. So let me share my screen. So here's an example of that um, same thing. It just, uh, you know, on the web, so you can see it a little closer. But again, that inner hierarchy, the secondary, and the third. So here's another example of it, uh, looking at nature photography, where we can see that inner level, and although this one has a number of segments, we can see some of the larger ones a little more clearly. This is one of the downfalls of any type of hierarchical uh, chart, like a tree map or a sunburst chart is that sometimes when you get some smaller wedges, they get very difficult to identify, particularly if you have to label them because it's a static image. Um, it's very hard to label all these things. However, the benefit of sunburst charts or any really radial display is they take up a square and often you can fit a lot of information into a very compact area. So you can see here the, the amount of data is, is quite significant. Um, but what we can see, what I'll speak to, is at least for like nature photography, we can see how nature photography as a whole, you know, is about maybe 30, 25 to 30% of all nature photography categories, or categories of photography rather. And within nature photography, we have landscape, wildlife, portrait, images, et cetera. And then obviously they break down landscape into uh, even more categories. Um, oh, it's going to reload on me. So here's an example of um, uh, this related to fishing, global fishing. And so this one you can see, and this is by Simon Beaumont, where we have the different um, continents or areas of fishing waters. So for example, here's Africa. So Africa fishing waters makes up a portion of all the continental fishing waters. And then what he has in here is then how that breaks up with who fishes in African waters. And so he breaks out that Africa into um, additional segments. Let's see if it'll... 
oh, there it is. So we can see here, um, it doesn't show the percentages, but um, these are all obviously percentages of the total um, possibilities. So a pretty cool way to kind of explore that and obviously a graphical way that kind of fits with the theme here. But my very favorite um, sunburst chart is one done by Christian Felix on celiac disease that he did for a Project Health Viz submission. And I absolutely love this. It tells a wonderful story. And it's really easy to navigate and understand this hierarchical progression. So on the inner, you know, inner ring, that inner donut, um, if you will, we have five different categories. So out of 100% of cases experienced uh, these different, uh, these are the uh, percentages of all those uh, symptoms. So for example, if we explore other symptoms, which makes up a pretty large portion um, of all cases, we can see that other cases is made up of a number of different um, symptoms or um, diseases. We have neurological, internal, emotional, cardiovascular, and blood. And so we can go down this hierarchy and explore. So of other symptoms, we can see there's a portion of those that are emotional. And of those that are emotional, uh, we have about 60% perhaps are just depressive disorder, and then 40 that are anxiety, I'm assuming. And so we can, we can go through this hierarchy uh, and see how each segment breaks out into further categories. What I really like about Christian's uh, visualization is that that uh, outermost layer, outermost ring rather, is the symptoms that he experienced during when, when he experienced uh, celiac disease. And so what's interesting about this is that uh, sometimes we see some burst charts that don't, um, that all, not all layers of the or rings um, go out the same number of hierarchical uh, levels. So in this case, um, we have his experience, and his experience is only on a handful of the symptoms, uh, not all of them. And so we see this too, if you think about using a Sunburst chart, and for example, in uh, organizational structure, you may have different departments, and then um, you know, under different supervisors, and then perhaps different teams, and some departments may go down a couple extra levels just based on the type of department they are, and others won't. And so you, sometimes you see this, a sunburst chart that has some extra bursts, if you will, uh, of data. Um, so that can still be helpful to kind of see um, the different layers or levels of hierarchies based on the innermost category. So I think this is a really fantastic example. It's not only beautiful, it's informative, packs a ton of information into a small area, which does make the sunburst chart very useful for um, exploring hierarchical data. And so that is Sunburst Charts. Back to you, John. Thanks so much. And thanks to Lindsay for that great review of Sunburst Diagrams. I love that example that she showed. It just demonstrates how you can take a diagram, a graph type that may be specific to a particular area like biology or like genomics and really expand it to your own type of data and your own use case. So until tomorrow, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. I will see you tomorrow.